Hi, Shalom to everyone. I continually commend each and every one of you who are in the pool, committed in the study of the Torah Kedushah and also in the application of Hashem's Divrei Torah, the words of Torah. This week is of such unbearable drama, an epic adventure of heroic and sensational messianic figure of Mashiach ben Yosef, which is uh, portrayed in the righteous life of Yosef ben Yaakov. And together with his brothers, 11 brothers headed by Yaakov, or, I'm sorry, Yehuda. And it happened in the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt during the years of severe famine. Starting from Breshit or Genesis 44 verse 18, we read, Vayigash elav Yehuda vayomer bi adoni yedaber daberna avdecha Daver ve'aznei adodi ve'al yechal apecha ve'avdecha ki kamocha ki faro. In English, when Yehuda approached him and said, Please, my Lord, let now your servant speak something in my Lord's ears, and let not your wrath be kindled against your servant. For you are like Pharaoh. This is the time when Yehuda approached in a very humble manner Yosef had Sadiq, not knowing that it was Yosef all along. And it was due to the fact that the second time around, when they were when they were buying some grains for food because of the severe famine in the whole land that uh, affected Canaan where they were living. So Yaakov Avinu just asked his sons to go back to Mitzrayim, Egypt for the second time buy some grains in order to eat and not die. But during the time Yosef at Sadiq made a condition that he will only see those 11 or 10 brothers of his if they will bring the youngest brother who is Benjamin or Benjamin. If not, he promised that he will not show his face to them anymore. Therefore, they cannot buy any more grain. So with that, it was Yehuda who approached their father, Yaakov, to allow their youngest brother, Binyamin or Benjamin, to go with them. And he was the one who assured his father that he will take good care of Benjamin. And if there is going to be something that will happen to his youngest brother, Binyamin, it will be charged to him all throughout the days of his life. And the reaction of the father, he said, my son was no more, referring to Yosef, and I have one more son with my wife, referring to Rachel, and if Anything that may ha will happen to him, you will bring my gray hairs to Sheol in the grave. But again, there is only one thing for them to, to be able to purchase some grains for the second time, and that is if Yaakov Avin will allow his youngest son, Binyamin, to go along with the brothers. And it so it happened. And during the time, 
when he, when uh, Yosef asked the manager, the supervisor of the palace, to fill the sacks with grains and return the money for the second time, return the money on the mouth of the sock and bring, put the silver goblet or chalice to the sock of the youngest brother referring to Binyamin. And so it, it happened. So when they were already moving out of the, the city proper of Mitzrayim, Egypt, there came the manager, the supervisor from Yosef's palace and said, what have you done to us? We have treated you with good things and you repay us with evil. And the brothers were shocked and said, we never, never did anything wrong against you. How come, the manager said, how come that after all the kindness and the goodness that my master has done to you, you have repaid him for evil. You have stolen his silver goblet. And the brothers replied, we have never stolen anything, silver or gold, we have never taken away from your property. And if anyone among us will be found to be taken, taken that goblet, let him be put to death. And all of us will be your slaves for all the rest of our lives. And then the manager said, very well said. And from the eldest to the youngest, they inspected all the sacks and they saw their money on the mouth of the socks and going down to the youngest, when they opened the socks of Benjamin, they found the silver goblet. And when they saw the silver goblet, the Torah said they tore their garments out of shame, out of grief. And they were tongue-tied. They were filled with condemnation. And they were brought back to the palace of Yosef at Sadiq. And there came this dramatic, epic story of the humble plea of Yehuda, who was then a very changed person, who approached Yosef at Sadiq. And this will arouse our hearts with the intense emotion when Yosef finally reveals himself to his brothers by the famous words which I want to quote later. But before that, but before that, this is what happened. It says, by a gosh, a love, and Yehuda approach in humility. Yosef at Sadiq, Vayomer bi Adoni yi daver, na av de ka, daver be asneid Adoni. It says, then Yehuda approached him and said, Please, my Lord, let now your servant speak something to the, into the Lord's ears. And he said, Ve'al yechal apecha, ve'avdecha ki kamocha ki faro. And let not your wrath be kindled against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh. Here we see the, the total change of the heart of Yehuda where in fact he was the one who orchestrated the plan of tearing apart that robe of many colors of Yosef and they dipped it in the goat's blood and really deceived their father Yaakov by presenting that deep torn 
robe of many colors saying that maybe your son had been torn apart by by ravenous animals in the fields but after 22 years there was a change of heart there was a, a, a genuine teshuva and coupled by a genuine tikkunim rectification of the wrong things and Yehuda made those things right this time this time he was the one who approached that person whom he did not know it was their brother Yosef and he was the one who humbled down and took upon himself all the responsibility that he will not allow the youngest brother of theirs Benjamin to to be slaves forever at the viceroy's palace because he was the one who who promised their father that he will surely bring Benjamin back to their father and there was then the plea went on and they were just saying that we have a father who is old and if Benjamin our youngest brother will be left under your care surely our father will die will you please allow me my Lord Yehuda said will you please allow me allow me to take the place of Benjamin and let me be the one to be your slave forever it was during the time that the intense emotion of Yosef was already at the pinnacle that he couldn't stand but really revealed himself because he felt the change of heart in the life of his brother Yehuda and in the in the next verses it says the famous words the words I would like to show you is hold on it was it was then Yosef said Ani Yosef Haod Abichai I am your brother Yosef Haavod Abichai in the English translation it says I am Yosef is my father still alive that is the one trillion dollar question and among the sages may all their memories may all their names before a blessing this is such a huge huge statement that came from the mouth of Yosef Hasidic it doesn't mean I am Yosef your brother is my father still living or is he dead that is not what Torah is trying to imply but when the brothers heard Yosef the Torah said they were afraid they were shocked they were startled at Yosef's rebuke is it a rebuke they were startled they couldn't say any word his brothers could not answer him because they were startled at his rebuke what does the Torah tells us in this very very important words 
Chachamim say that this is a Musar Shebe Musarim. Musar Shebe Musarim means it is a rebuke of all rebukes. These words are probably the most dramatic words in the entire Torah HaKedushah. And we will see a blockbuster Kiddush, a revelation from this epic drama in the lives of this holy Shevatim, the holy tribes, the holy Roshe Shevatim. This is a story that is filled with wonder of wonders, Pele Plaot, something that will give a huge and deep not just story, but message of life for each and every one of us. Enrich with the Midah, the attribute of Mashiach ben Yosef, that is referring to Messiah, son of Yosef, Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord, that shows and portrays the the attribute, the characteristics of our own Lord and Messiah, Yeshua, portrayed by Yosef Hatzadik. What is the meaning behind those words of Yosef? Ani Yosef, Haod Avi Chai. What does that supposed to mean? Is it simply, I am Yosef, and am, am my father still alive? That is not the meaning of Torah in this Pasuk. What does this Pasuk mean? Ani Yosef achichem asher mechartem oti mitzrayim means I am Yosef whom you sold into Egypt. Is my father od avi Chai, this is the meaning of this. Is my father still spiritually alive? Because of what you have done to me, you have taken me away from my father's arms. You have stolen my father's dreams. You have made him depressed and half dead because of the lies and deception that you have done against my father. Is my father still spiritually alive? In that way, in what way, in what way is my father alive? That is the meaning of that. Ani Yosef, Od Avichai, in what way is my father still alive? How can how can my father stay in that peaceful situation where in fact I who is so close to my father Yaakov have been taken away from him? in this part of the moment. That's why the scripture says, then the brothers, then the brothers could not answer because they were startled, they were shocked due to Yosef's rebuke. It was a deep and subtle rebuke that came from the mouth of Yosef that's a dig. But because, but because, Yosef felt that humility and that, that honesty and a changed heart in the lives of his brothers, especially headed by Yehuda, everything changed. Everything changed. In Reishi chapter 45, verse 26, it says, by a gidu lo lemor, od Yosef chai. This is the time that when they went back to the father Yaakov, and the report 
was made by the brothers to their father Yaakov all about what Yosef said. This is what you are going to tell our father Yaakov. That is why in verse 26, when they went back to Canaan and they faced their father Yaakov, Avinu, the words from Torah, Vayagidu lo lemor. It means if they, brothers, told Yaakov lemor, saying, Od Yosef chai. Od Yosef chai. Vehi hu Moshel Eretz Mitzrayim vayafag libo kilo he emin lahem. And they, the brothers, told Yaakov, saying, Od Yosef chai. It means, Father, Yosef, our brother, is alive. And what does it mean? He's not dead. He is alive. That is not what the mother tongue Hebrew means by Od Yosef Chai. If you remember, we always say, Am Yisrael Chai. Let all the people of Israel Chai live. It doesn't mean to say physically alive. It doesn't mean materially alive. It doesn't mean just alive doing the simple mundane things every now and then, every days of the life. Odd Yish or Odd Yosef Chai means Yosef is spiritually alive. And he ruled over the entire land of Mitzrayim in that place of degradation, in that place of spiritual decadence, devout of Hashem's etchem, devout of Hashem's essence of spirituality. Mitzrayim, a place of spiritual constriction, a place of spiritual restriction, where there is total absence of Torah, where there is total absence of Hashem Shikira. It is a place of obscurity, a place of spiritual decadence. There is where the Rashaim lives, the wicked people live there in Mitzrayim. But despite, despite of that place of decadence and the obscure absence, the obscure place of, of the presence of Hashem, the Torah, is absent. There is no Shabbat in Mitzrayim. No, no mitzvot. No Moedim in Mitzrayim. The words of the brothers, Od Yosef Chai, despite of that, that wicked place Mitzrayim, Despite of the ruler of Mitzrayim who is posing to be God over all the people. Od Yosef Chai. Yosef is still spiritually alive. That is why in Breshit 45 verse 26 when the brother said, Od Yosef Achai, which deeply means Yosef is, is spiritually alive. Because he revealed himself before us in humility. His midah, the godly characteristic, is still there. He drew himself close to us. He was the one he drew closer to us. It wasn't us. 
it was Yosef, our brother. He first acted love and forgiveness and assurance of good welfare for us and for you, Father. That is why he said, Odd Yosef Chai. Yosef did not change. Yosef is still the tzaddik <laughs> where he first left Canaan at the age of 70 and after 22 years Yosef is still high, spiritually alive, maintaining a spiritual ascension of his neshama, keeping Torah intact in his heart. The spirit of Torah and the mitzvot is still in operation in his life. We saw it. That's the meaning of Od Yosef Chai. But the next pasuk, it says, "Vechihu Moshe bechol eretz Mitzrayim." Yaakov Avinu couldn't couldn't believe that his son Yosef, after 22 years living in in Mitzrayim, being the ruler of the whole entire Egypt is still high, spiritually alive. He knew very well that, that Yosef had not been dead. He knew it, there is a witness in his heart that his son Yosef is very much alive. But the question is, in what way is his son Yosef alive? Because there are so many people around us Alive, going to work, reading the scripture, sometimes attending religious activities. But the question is, are they spiritually alive? Or are they already assimilating with the things of this world? Or are they already captivated with the physicalities and the materialism that surrounds them in their spiritual Mitzrayim? Because remember, my friends, Mitzrayim is not just the nation of Egypt. It is a spiritual meaning that where there is constriction and restriction of God's Torah and Mitzvot. And the Messiah and the joy of keeping Shabbat, it is a place of constriction. It is a place of restriction. It is spiritual Mitzrayim. That's why when Yaakov Avinu heard that Yosef is already the ruler of the entire Egypt all the more. He did not believe that his son Yosef is high. He did not believe that his son Yosef is spiritually alive. The scripture says that. It says, Vayagu libo kilo emin lahim. For he did not believe them. But when they brought their father Yaakov Avinu outside and he saw something before his eyes, it says, Vayar et ha'agalot asher shalach Yosef haset oto. He saw the wagons, the agalot, when he saw the wagons that Yosef had sent to carry him. But he ruach Yaakov, but he ruach Yaakov avihem. And the spirit of their father was revived. When they saw the, when Yaakov Avinu saw the 
agalot, the wagons. What's there in the wagons? The sages say, may their names be for a blessing. The sages, the Hachamim says, that before Yosef left the tent to look for his brothers, before he was kidnapped and thrown into the pit, before he was sold to the merchants and brought to Mitzrayim, his father and Yosef had a good engagement of Torah. And in that Torah, Yaakov Avinu taught his son Yosef about the wagons, the agalot. The topic of the time between the father and the son, and maybe also ben, ben, Binyamin was also there, while Yaakov Avinu was making a drash or a shiur, and the last message of Yaakov Avinu was about the, the agalot, the wagons. And I feel in my spirit, when you, when you hear about agalot, wagons, what does it symbolize? It symbolizes the Geula. It symbolizes the vehicle that God will send all His faithful believers to ride going home to our eternal destination. And there is that spiritual bus or spiritual plane or spiritual vehicle, the agalot, the wagons, in order to carry you to go back home. Where else but in Jerusalem? When Melech HaMashiach Yeshua gloriously returns. So when Yaakov Avinu saw the agalot, these open his ruach the spirit of Yaakov was revived the Torah says and in verse 28 chapter 45 it says Vayomer Israel it's now no longer Yaakov but and Israel said when he saw the Adalot the wagons he said Rav Rav it means great Od Yosef Beni Chai. Yes, great. Now I believe that my son Yosef is still spiritually alive. I will go and see him before I die. Yeratzon, may it be God's will that the same should be said concerning us that in Hashemayim we should be considered Odecha Kai and we still continue to live by the words listen very carefully every Shabbat we recite prayerfully worshipfully with all of our hearts the greatest commandment Shema Israel, Hashem Elohim, Hashem Echad. Ve'ahavta et Hashem Elohecha, Bechol levavcha, Uvkol nafshecha, Uvkol meodecha. Ve'hayu hadvarim, Asher Elohim mitzavcha, Hayom al levavcha, these words which God is commanding you today are to be on your heart. Still, and Besrat Hashem, still spiritually alive and well and ascending. Despite of all the challenges, my dear friends, of this galut, this exile that we are in, let us remain spiritually resilient and strong let us remain close to Hashem and united 
ובמלך המשיח ישוע אדוננו. United with our King, Messiah Yeshua our Lord, and to His Torah Hedeshah and His mitzvot, and to His statutes, and let us maintain our high levels of purity and holiness so that we can merit to have the Pasuk in Sefer Devarim be fulfilled upon us in this generation. It says, Ve'atem hadvechim be'ashem elohechem But you who cleave to Hashem your God, Chayim kolchem hayom. Chayim kolchem hayom. You are all alive up to this day. And be it so. Amen chem. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov bless you. And may you continually be od chai. Continually be spiritually alive and well. Be spiritually ascending and ascending <coughs> higher and higher. Drawing closer and closer to Hashem. As we see the day of Hashem and Yeshua the Messiah approaching. As we see the glorious return of Melech HaMashiach Yeshua our Lord. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.